Go. Hi guys, my name is Mark Rangera, and today we're gonna teach you how to do time series analysis through our studio. This is my group member Dennis Boko, and this is my other member Vince Inaria, and we're the Hot Five. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What is time series analysis? Time series is a series of data points in which each data is associated with a timestamp. A simple example is the price of stock in the stock market at different points of time in a given day. Another example is the amount of rainfall in a region at different months of the year. Our language uses many functions to create, manipulate, and plot the time series data. The data for the time series is stored in an R object called time series object. It is also a R data object like a vector or a data frame. So, what are the parameters of time series object? The first parameter is the data. The second is the start. The third one is the end. And lastly is the frequency. Data is a vector of matrix containing the values used for the time series. While start specifies the start of the first observation in time series. And specifies the date for the last observation in time series. While frequency specifies the number of observation per unit time. So, what is the syntax for time series? The basic syntax for time series is can be used through TS function. This is an example of a TS function. It starts with the object name, then the TS function itself. Time frequency interval. You can decide the time of intervals at which the data points are measured. This can be done by assigning a specific number to the frequency parameter. Example. A value of 12 indicates that the time series is for months, while a value of 4 indicates that the time series is for quarters. A value of 6 indicates that the time series is for every 10 minutes of an hour, while a value of 24 times 6 indicates that the time series is for every 10 minutes of a day. Here, you will see an example of a time series chart, which, is, which has a value of 12. And it can be determined by counting the number of pegs in a chart. So what are the pegs? This is an example of the peg. It is the spike that you will see in the specific charts. I'm going to teach you how to create a time series data analysis. So the first thing we do is we install a package called time series. In my case, I have it already installed. So this is how you're going to do it. Yeah. So this is the time series data package. This one. Then we proceed on creating a time series. So what are the steps in making a time series? The first thing you do is you create a vec uh, vector to get the data points in it. So here, we've already had a vector. So make sure that uh, there is no error in it by checking on the global environment if it, if it was successfully registered. So the next thing we do is we convert it to a time series object. Rainfall that time series equals to TS rainfall start equals vector in 12 1 then frequency is 12 to denote that we are looking for months in here of course we run it to ensure that yeah, the system recognizes that there is no error in it. So the third thing we do is we we print it to ensure that uh, our time series is working properly. Yes, it's working properly. It's showing uh, months and values in it. 
So we give we on uh, the next thing we do is we chart it. So we give uh of course we give a file name to it. Uh, it was that training for that PNG. File that train falls that PNG. Then we run it, and we will see here that uh, it was successfully recorded. Train falls that PNG. Great. Um, after giving it a name, then the next thing we do is we plot it using the plot function. Plot train for the time series. Uh, it's working. Of course, we used to save the file in order for it to be successfully shown in the plots uh, in the plots area of the plots area of the R Studio. So we plot it using uh, we save it using DevOps. DevOps. Then we we run it. So here is an example of a time series uh, analysis using R Studio. We convert it to matrix using the rate and of course using the matrix function. So combine the train call, train call equals matrix vector train call one and then train call train call two. After that, we, we put the end row parameter, then we set it to 12. Of course, we run it to ensure that uh, there are no errors in it. Yeah, properly. Then we, the next thing we do is we convert, we convert the matrix to a time series. Rain for, rain for the time time series equals ps that combine the rainfall uh, start equals c 2012 then 1 then frequency equals 12 So the fourth thing we do is we print it to a time series data using the print function to ensure that uh, the data that we're getting is uh, uh, correct based on the time series that we we declared. Yeah, so yeah, you see at a uh, time series in a matrix form. So the next thing we do is we chart the we chart we chart the time series multiple series. Multiple series that PNG. Multiple series that PNG. Then the next thing we do is we're gonna plot it using the plot function. The main function to give name to the uh, series, multiple time series, then of course we save it. I want to check if there's no error. Save it, then we run it again for the plot to be seen. 
So here is an example of how you generate uh, multiple time series. So guys, what we demonstrated earlier is time series analysis using R2Duke. And I hope that you learned something today. That's great!